Good afternoon, everyone. We just finished a unit talking specifically about how information is stored, DNA, to the process where genetic information is changed into another form of genetic information called RNA, whereby it is then transformed or translated by something called ribosomes into amino acid information which builds polypeptides to form functional proteins. All right. We talked a lot about um, the monomers that make up these nucleotides, or the monomers that make up these polymers of DNA and RNA. We talked a little bit about how DNA and RNA differ. Um, these monomers are called nucleotides. These nucleotides build upon one another to form the polymers of DNA and RNA. We talked about the functions and the differences between them. Um, and we talked about the process whereby the body or by organisms send signals to specific cells or specific regions whereby the DNA will be converted into RNA and then converted into protein. All right. We talked about some major differences between DNA and RNA, um, where as far as their nitrogenous bases, as far as their structure, as far as their sugars. Um, we talked about some nitrogenous bases and how they match via base pairing and how information is actually stored in the base pairing sequences. Um, we just finished an activity where we basically took um, proteins and we converted them backwards into a gene where you guys created the genes for the proteins that you made uh, the enzymes with the active sites. All right. Um, <clears throat> this is just a very quick rendition of how a ribosome um, RNA or RNA polymerase, sorry, reads DNA and makes a copy of RNA. And we talked specifically about how RNA is processed. The introns are taken out. We add the five prime cap and the polyadenylated tail, um, whereby this mRNA, this mature mRNA, then leaves the nucleus to be made into a long chain of amino acids, um, which are then made into polypeptides and made into proteins by ribosomes. All right. So a basic understanding of that is important. Um, we went over that in class. Uh, we also had some worksheets and some lecture videos on that. So if you're having any trouble with that, you've got to uh, refer back to those um, or see me with questions. Hopefully the activity that we did helped you understand the relationship between a gene and a protein and all the things that actually have to happen in order for a gene to actually make a protein. Um, there are more than 20,000 protein coding genes in the human genome. Um, the human genome has uh, far less, about 8,000 genes less than the grapes. Um, they have about four to 5,000 more genes than a chicken, uh, tons more than a fruit fly. The bacteria E. coli only has 4,000 genes, uh, and the virus influenza only has 11 genes. Um, genes are the way in which an organism is able to respond to its environment and by how it is able to pass on the instructions to make proteins that are important for its functioning, for its feeding, for its reproduction. All right. We talked a little bit about a karyotype where in the um, meiosis and mitosis unit, where a karyotype is an expression of all the chromosomes that an organism has. All right, so this is the human genome. The human genome has two of each chromosome, and there are 23. All right, um, here you're seeing 24 because they're showing two Y chromosomes and two X chromosomes. But we know that either a female has two X chromosomes or a male has one X chromosome and one Y. This organism that we're depicting here is a human. This is the this is the chromosomes of a human cell, and this cell is a diploid cell. You can tell it's diploid because each chromosome has a matching pair. All right, all the different colors on these chromosomes represent different parts of the DNA that carry different genes. Remember, the gene is a nucleotide is a sequence of bases that codes for specific proteins in an organism. What you can see here is that the, this blue gene up top also has a matching blue gene on this chromosome. Now the important thing to understand is that although these are homologous chromosomes, the same type of information is on each. 
that they don't exactly have the same exact information. For example, if this gene here codes for um, a, uh, an organism that's going to be very tall, this gene on this organism is also going to code for height, but it may not code for tallness. Uh, on another part, let's look at this white part, on this organism, uh, or on this organism here, on this chromosome, this gene could code for uh, blue eyes, and this gene here also codes for eye color, but may code for something like brown eyes. All right. It's the interaction of these two alleles that leads to something called phenotype. The phenotype is the, the physical characteristic or the physical trait of an organism. And the phenotype, the physical appearance of an organism, is a result of something called genotype. The genotype is the genetic makeup of the organism. So all these chromosomes have genes on them, but these genes are expressed in ways where an organism shows physical traits. Okay, um, Each form of a gene, there are two forms of the gene here, each form of a gene is called an allele. All right. If we move ahead here, so an allele is a form of a gene. So if we look at two chromosomes here, if we look over here, these two genes, little a and little a, this gene, they occur, of course, they occur in the same place on the chromosome, but in this example, both those genes are the same. We call that homozygous, or two alleles that are the same. These two are also homozygous, two big P's. If you look over here, a big B and a small b, this represents an allele, and this represents an allele, but they're the same character, meaning they control the same trait, the physical trait, but one of them is coding for something and the other is coding for something else. That is called heterozygous. An example would be maybe this codes for brown eyes and this codes for blue eyes. They both code for eyes because they're, the they're, they're coding for the same character. But they're different forms of the gene. One of them codes for blue and one of them codes for green or codes for brown. All right. How these alleles of a gene interact with one another is what gives humans their different traits. Okay. So, so far we're looking at alleles. Our alleles are different forms of a gene. Genes are nucleotide sequences that exist on chromosomes and all they are is nitrogenous based sequences that code for specific stuff. Okay. Remember here, an organism that has two of each chromosome is called diploid. And it's important also to understand that in order for this organism to occur, each cell has this, all right? Meiosis is the process that would create cells with half the amount of DNA so that they can fuse to form a diploid organism. So sex cells are haploid, so when two sex cells fuse, you end up with one of each copy. All right? Now some common alleles that we inherit, eye color has many different alleles, that's something called multiple alleles. Um, another example of multiple alleles would be blood type. We have blood type A, we have blood type O, and we have blood type B. Those are three different blood types that are coded for by different alleles on chromosomes. All right? And remember, because you only have, generally you only have two of each allele, you're only going to inherit either the A, the, B, the A, two A's, two B's, an A and a B, or an O. All right? Or you might, um, or you can have that's pretty much it, actually. Um, the ability to roll your tongue is actually an inherited trait that comes from your genetic basis. Not everyone can roll their tongue, but the ability to roll their tongue comes from genes that allow the muscles of the tongue to fold in specific ways. All right? Whether or not you have a hitchhiker's thumb or a regular thumb is also controlled by the, the combination of alleles that you've inherited from your parents. All right? Another example of multiple alleles, all right, multiple alleles, is skin color, all right? The alleles for skin color actually occur on six different places uh, throughout uh, the chromosomes. And whether or not you inherit lighter or darker alleles, all right, determines whether you have a light or dark skin, all right? So if you have an albino, for example, all right, has zero, has no dark alleles, all right? as opposed to a person with the, with the darkest skin possible, they have all six dark alleles. And most of us lie somewhere in between.